1975, in Puerto Rico, a farmer saw most of his goats lying lifeless on the ground. He got closer and saw that the animals were stiff and had two puncture marks on their necks. Goats were not the only animals that were hurt. Many pigs, cows, and geese lost their lives too. They all had the same distinctive bite marks on their necks and all had been drained of their vital fluids. The locals immediately jumped to conclusions and blamed dogs and the authorities didn't bother to do a better investigation and just said dogs had done it without looking for any proof. A couple of days later, though many more animals were found deceased, among them was a cow that had literally been opened and it had a lot of scratches on its head. The farmer next door reported that his chickens had been destroyed by something. In just a few weeks, the creature took the lives of 90 farm animals. After some time, another farmer said that 10 of his goats had been drained, 7 had been hurt, and 11 were missing. This time, the authorities didn't waste any time and started the monster hunt, but they had no luck finding the culprit. The incident was all over the local newspaper, and the beast was named the Vampire of Maka. The incident caught the attention of the Agricultural Commission, and scientist Juan Rivera was tasked to solve this otherworldly mystery. His first suspect was a Puerto Rican boa. This non-venomous snake can grow to be a little over six feet. Still, its diet consists of only small prey. It's also very shy of humans and other animals. It avoids bigger creatures at all costs. You're more likely to see fish climbing trees than this boa taking down a whole cow. Near the crime scene, a large cave was discovered, and we all know that weird creatures like living in dark, cold caves. In the cave, they found some crazy-looking bats. As we've seen in movies, bats can turn into vampires, so they must be the culprit. But no, bats were as innocent as they could be. Their favorite food wasn't cows or goats, it was figs. They were peaceful, fruit-eating bats that didn't care about animals. Again, the researcher hit a wall. Suddenly, all the terror stopped in July 1975. It seemed like the creature had vanished into thin air, but not for long. Two decades later, 62 miles from the previous site, more animals were found. A local vet examined them. He was terrified to discover that every animal had two precisely cut holes like he had never seen before. The animals were anemic and looked like they'd passed away recently. By the looks of it, the creature's favorite food was goats, and that's how it got the infamous name we all heard of, chupacabra, which means the goat sucker. Dogs, chickens, rabbits, and other animals were not off the menu. In short time, the chupacabra took a thousand farm animals. Now, this animal had a name, but people still had zero idea about what the chupacabra looked like, which was terrifying. In Canovanas, Madeline and her mother reported seeing a weird creature that could have been the chupacabra. They said it had been walking on two legs like a human and resembled a kangaroo. They mentioned that the monster also had spikes on the back, no ears, large dark eyes, and two holes for a nose. It had two arms with three fingers. The chupacabra seemed to like Madeline's house because her husband and his co-worker found it in the garage. They tried to capture it, but didn't succeed. Madeleine later drew a detailed sketch of it. Many people saw the sketch and reported seeing a similar creature. They claimed it had strong legs and wings and smelled like sulfur. Take all these descriptions with a grain of salt. If they'd been true, they would have been all over the news. But still, keep in mind these descriptions. They will be important later in the story. In 1976, on some talk show, they talked about the chupacabra, and the show quickly went viral. Soon, people started reporting having seen a similar creature in Florida and Mexico. Many said that the stories were like a unicorn rodeo. They were totally made up. In Mexico, two skeptical inquiries, Patricia and Mario, laid traps around those farms where the chupacabra had allegedly been seen. They caught some animals in their traps, but no sign of the goat sucker. They only captured wild dogs. The police stated that the chupacabra was just a wild dog, not a mythical creature. 
And still, in the next five years, there were numerous sightings of the chupacabra worldwide. On the 13th of August of the year 2000, a farmer from Nicaragua found 25 of his sheep and 35 of his neighbor's sheep hurt. So he decided to take the matter into his own hands. One night, he was patiently waiting in the pitch black night for the creature to appear. Suddenly, from the corner of his eye, he saw something and managed to hit it. The creature passed away. Finally, they had proof that the chupacabra was not just a fairy tale. It was a big thing. Later, the chupacabra was examined by a vet. The vet was shocked because he had no idea what the creature was. Remember Madeline's description? Well, the vet described the animal differently, but his story turned out to be more plausible. This chupacabra had large teeth, giant claws, greenish eyes, bat-like skin, and a crest sticking out of its back. The vet concluded that the animal was some kind of hybrid. They thought it was a cross between a wolf and a crocodile, but it sounds like an exaggeration and is hard to believe. We all know that such a mix is impossible. They did some tests on the body at the university in Nicaragua, and the results didn't quite deliver what they had expected. The animal was a wild dog with mange. Mange is an itchy skin disease that causes dogs to lose their hair. It's also highly contagious. When a dog has mange, their skin becomes scaly and wrinkled. When they returned the body, the farmer noticed it wasn't his chupacabra. Seven years later, another body was found in Texas. Phyllis Cannon returned to her farm and noticed that some of her chickens had passed away. All seemed to be anemic. Later, she saw coyote-looking creatures that didn't have any hair. More of her animals were harmed, so she had to set up cameras on her farm. But unfortunately, like always, she didn't manage to record anything. Surprisingly, she got a call from a local farmer who had found the chupacabra hit by a car. Later, another body was found much closer to her farm. She took some pictures of the animal and soon, those images were all over the internet. Phyllis was curious and sent five DNA samples to five different universities. The results didn't match any animal in the archives. Researchers had no idea what it was, but it wasn't a dog. Phyllis still has one animal in her freezer and a taxidermied specimen in her house. There are many theories about the chupacabra. Some claim that the animal is a genetically modified monkey that escaped the lab. Others state that it's some mysterious, otherworldly creature. The most consistent hypothesis is that the chupacabra is a mix between a Mexican wolf and a coyote with mange. Now, do you remember that Phyllis said that she had sent samples to five universities and no match had been found? Well, it turned out she hadn't been telling the truth. At one university, they found that the animal was a mix between a coyote and a Mexican wolf and that it had mange. Animals with mange are weak and will likely try to hunt farm animals to survive. People, when they see something they don't know, tend to exaggerate, which is why all witnesses describe the animal differently. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.